Jane, thank you. This, this, this is tremendously meaningful. I've been going to the beaches of Normandy since I was a kid. I can actually remember seeing the burnt out hulks of uh, some of the tanks and landing craft, etc. I was that young. Uh, it was not too long after the war, just a very few years. Um, I was about three or four years old, so I, I have a memory of it. And, um, uh, you know, I've been there, I've visited, revisited. It's really sacred ground and an inspiration to anybody who serves or has served in the military. And it's a symbol of uh, what we're all working for. So this, so this is super, super meaningful. Thank you. Um, it's great to be, I, wa I want to thank uh, Ambassador Johannes for being here, and Ambassador Nick Sines is not here, but well represented, and we're grateful for UNESCO and OECD and everything they do, and for the mission, obviously, here uh, at our embassy, and I'm unbelievably grateful for what Jane Hartley, uh, those were, where are you somewhere, those were, thank you so much, you're fabulous, this is your third tour, I think, in Paris, how do you keep drawing Paris, what's the deal here? <laughs> Do you know something none of us do? <laughs> you got connections over here, folks. Um, anyway, uh, uh, really, you've been marvelous in shepherding through these things. And to every one of you who have helped to manage these 32-plus uh, trips, uh, I particularly want to say uh, a thank you to, your, to the executive uh, and security and consular uh, wings of our great family here because you had to deal with Paris uh, terrorist attacks and you had to deal with Americans who uh, were injured, hurt, and lost lives and also for the families and same thing with Nice. So you've been through the mill. Uh, France has been through the mill. It's been a tough, tough period for everybody. And I was so honored to be here that night and be able to see the embassy lit up in the Bleu Blanc Rouge. Uh, it was uh, moving, stirring, and uh, I think a great tribute by our country and an affirmation of this very special relationship that we have. It's meaningful that we have the oldest relationship. This is the oldest relationship, longest relationship with the United States. And even now on, on Broadway in the play Hamilton, uh, the relationship with Lafayette in France is being uh, greatly uh, singled out and, and in some ways spoofed, but in other ways completely honored. Uh, anybody here seen Hamilton? Has anybody been lucky enough to get to it? We've got a few folks who've been to it. Uh, well, at least download the soundtrack, folks, and <laughs> listen to it and enjoy it. Uh, it's absolutely spectacular. But uh, the relationship with France, this is the place where the rights of man evolved and developed. And not so far away from here, as you know, right over there in the Place La Concorde, uh, a few hundred yards from here, diagonally, is the place where the guillotine was set up and where the revolution carried out its most bloody period. Uh, and there were several revolutions, as you all know, as there was a counter-revolution and a counter-counter-revolution and so forth, as people began to try to figure out how to manage affairs. We're still trying to figure out how to make the way we've chosen to manage them work better. And I just want to remind you that there aren't a lot of alternatives. You know, we're human beings. We've been given certain faculties, arms, legs, brain, eyes, nose, ears. We listen, we hear, we speak, we think. We're the one entity that, uh, according to the scriptures, was given the power to reason and the power and dominion over everything else. So it's up to us. And in some places it's not doing so well. Everybody knows that. That is part of what is being reflected in this politics of turmoil and chaos in some places. But what I want to remind you all is that if you read through the course of history, and I urge you to do it, because you can't tell where you want to go if you don't understand where we've been. Read about uh, the evolution. I mean, we've been through dictatorships of all kinds. We've been to the extreme of the left, and we've been to the extreme of the right. We've seen what communism in its various incarnations is like. We've seen what Stalin did as millions of people lost their lives. We've seen what 
happens when people's lives are closed in on and they live in a gulag like North Korea. And we've seen what happens in monarchies and we've seen what happens in democracies and we've seen what happens in bastardized monarchies and democracies where you have a parliamentary this and a constitutional that. We've been through it. And I don't know anybody who's come up with a better way to do it than to make democracy work. Where you fulfill the full rights of people and you protect human rights and you stand up for freedom of speech and you don't put people in jail because of what they say. It's hard. It's not easy. But we need to be very, very wary of this movement of authoritarian populism that is exploiting fear and exploiting a difficult economy where people don't feel like they're doing well economically. And when you combine fear and bad economics and nationalism, you get what we got throughout the 20th century. You better think about that. It's not, not, you know, it's really not hard for somebody to stand up and exploit the will of a broad group of people with slogans and with demagoguery. But are they really going to take you to a place that makes your life better? Are they really going to do the things that are necessary to fulfill the full blossoming of democracy? That began here and in England, the Magna Carta. And we've all been working at this ever since. That's the journey we're on. And I want you all just to think about that journey. You are blessed to get up every single morning and go to work with a real sense of purpose and a capacity to make a difference. It doesn't matter what you do, whether you're behind the consular window and you're the face of our nation and you're working somebody through a visa or a problem, or whether you are in the ambassador's office and meeting over in the Quai d'Orsay and working things through. Everybody is contributing to this effort to build out our system of government, to fulfill it, and in doing so, to protect our interests and to protect our values. That's what this is all about. So I cannot thank Embassy Paris uh, and the consulates here enough for the incredible work you have done under difficult circumstances to help us work through this transitional moment. And I assure you, I believe deeply, this is a transitional moment. We're going to move through this. But I want to leave you with the thought that don't feel like it's the glass half, you know, empty. It's a, it's a glass half full. And I say that because we're making, in the midst of all this craziness, the world is transforming itself and making progress. More people are free. More democracies have come into existence since the Berlin Wall than anything else, than any time in history. More people are able to get up in the morning and have food and go to work. It may not be the best work in the world yet. It may not pay as much as we think it ought to. But 400 million people have come out of poverty in China, about the same in India. Run around the world and you will see that we, for the first time in history of humankind, have driven extreme poverty below the 10% mark in the entire world. We're curing diseases that we never thought we could cure. Technology is providing advanced quality of life for many, many people. Yeah, it's a challenge for jobs. 85% of the job loss in America comes from the loss from technology advances, not from trade. But the bottom line is, no matter where we look, we stopped Ebola in its tracks in, 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 in West Africa. People predicted a million people were going to die. And it's not nation states that are going to war with each other and killing people, at least not now. It's nation states that have to defend themselves against non-state actors, particularly those who stand for a kind of nihilism, for an assault on civilization itself. And boy, if we can't stand up to that, we're, we're not following in the footsteps properly of those who stormed Normandy those beaches and those who delivered France and Europe from, from tyranny. And we owe it to everybody to make sure we live up to that high standard. So you're doing that here. I know you are. And I want to thank you immeasurably. 32 trips is a lot of trips from the Secretary of State. But every one of them has had the purpose, because Paris is so central, 
and, and, and so people come from North Africa, people come from the Middle East, people come from Russia, from the eastern part of Europe, people come from America, and so we meet here, or in London, or in Rome, or somewhere, because it works. Tomorrow, the reason I'm here now is because today I've been working on and continuing to work on how do we save the city of Aleppo from being absolutely completely destroyed, and how do we get an arrangement where we can end the threat, hopefully, for a longer period of time rather than shorter to the civilians in the country. What is happening in Aleppo is the worst catastrophe. What's happening in Syria is the worst catastrophe since World War II itself. It's unacceptable. It's horrible. It pains me to see children and women and some old lady being carried in a chair out of the city of, Dema of, of, of Aleppo and, and people worried about bombs right and bombs left and machine guns and even people who are supposedly on their side shooting at them to prevent them from leaving so they stay there as human shields. So we're arguing with a lot of people at this moment and it's hard. But I will say, and I say this on the record, we have some press friends here and I, on the record I say, we are working hard with people that we even have disagreements with in order to see if we can find a way in the name of humanity and decency to be able to protect those lives and try to separate combatants and move the process forward. We are close, we're not there yet, but tomorrow I will have a team from America under President Obama's direction be in Geneva together with Russians and we will, I hope, come to some kind of an arrangement where we can see how civilians might be able to be protected and what can happen with the <coughs> armed opposition. My hope is, my goal in all of this is not just to have a temporary thing, but to get both sides, all the parties, to the table in Geneva. And that's what we're working on here. So that's why I'm here, that's why you're supporting this effort. We're going to try as hard as we can tomorrow to see if we can advance this process. I know people are tired of these meetings. I'm tired of these meetings. And people are sort of, oh, another meeting. Okay, this one will end the same way the other one did. I get it, folks. Uh, I'm not born yesterday. But what am I supposed to do? Go home and have a nice weekend in Massachusetts while people are dying? Sit there in Washington and do nothing? That's not the way we do business. That's not what the United States does. It's not what people of decency do. And that's not what we do if we keep faith with those before us who've always proved that you've got to keep, whether it's keeping fighting or keeping talking, you've got to keep on keeping in order to keep faith with the other. That's what diplomacy is about. It's about trying. And I hope that in the next uh, days, as I said, uh, we can find some way to get to the table. The most important thing to me is to get to the table. Whether they're fighting, not fighting, or anything else, let's have a serious discussion about how you end this war. So that's the effort. You're all part of it. I want to thank John Natter, who brought this flag out to me. John's very special. He worked for me every day since the day that I was announced as a secretary, and I came into the transition. One of the first two people I met in the State Department was John Natter. He's a treasure for all of us, and I want to thank John for being such a good friend and everything he's done. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it. <laughs> so, God bless you all. Joyeux Noël. Have a happy holiday. Enjoy these days. Uh, be with family. Be safe and uh, keep on doing what you're doing. Godspeed.